Y254 Imagine Good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254 News Update. And tonight we talk about suicide prevention. And with me to help us tackle this uh, topic for the night is Shalene Denus, who is a counseling psychologist. We have Maureen Kada, who is a mental health blogger. And we have Carol Stanley and Belinda Kadambi, who are for their students at the Kenyatta University. Don't forget you can be part of this conversation by sharing your views and your comments on our social media platforms. That is on Y254 uh, channel, hashtag Y254 News. You can also reach me at Patricia Maureen. My name is Patricia Morioki and let us start our discussion. According to the World Health Organization, one person still dies every 40 seconds from suicide in Kenya. One in four Kenyans is likely to suffer from a mental health disorder at one point in their lives. So this is a point whereby I now bring you guys in. And my first question would, would be, as any of you, what has been your experiences with mental health uh, Specifically, let's talk about depression, which is the most cause of mental health in our country. Let me start with um, the expert on this, Shalin. All right, so suicide in any form is a tragedy for anybody. <laughs> Sometimes it can also be a mystery. You've heard so many people say, I don't know why he or she decided to do this. I don't know what could have led up to suicide. So it can be, it can be that mystery, but there are things that you need to look out for. There are very um, many warning signs for somebody thinking about suicide. Mm -hmm. It's like, I feel like I'm a burden, you know? What is my purpose in life? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. Why is it always a struggle? You know, when people start talking like this, these are some of the manifestations that someone may be considering mm -hmm. before actually going into the act. Mm -hmm. They may be considering suicide. So when you're busy, you know, talking to people, just listen to what they're saying. Okay. Yeah. So let me bring you, Maureen. Um, so have you had any experiences either directly or maybe someone around you having gone through depression or even attempted suicide? Yeah, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. And uh, yes, you. I have experienced both direct and indirect mm -hmm. uh, mental disorder, I would say. Mm -hmm. Because back then, when, I was, uh, when I, was, I was in high school, you know, there's all that pressure. Yeah. And uh, when you're around people who would not really understand that it's a phase you're going through, if you have people around you who don't know how to pro properly deal with you as you're going through that phase, um, you could actually lose yourself mm -hmm. but um, at least I got someone to help me walk through it and I was out of it and when it comes to indirectly I have had friends who have actually committed suicide mm -hmm. yeah okay sorry for that uh, bringing you in Carol what has been your experience with mental health okay thank you Patricia for this opportunity first You're and foremost welcome. I'd like to say the ideology of committing suicide has always come up in my mind, mm -hmm. maybe personally, mm -hmm. or indirectly. Mm -hmm. And for example, when back in high school, when I was in high school, I had a friend, a classmate who committed suicide, mm -hmm. and that was so sad. Mm -hmm. So, in my point, I want to say, for example, if you hear a friend, a person who keep on saying, one day I'll commit suicide, mm -hmm. don't take it for granted. Talk to that person, follow up, know the reason, or the purpose, or why he or she won't commit the suicide. Personally, I've had the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe in one or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Belinda. Um. Thank you. As for me, uh, I have experienced uh, depression indirectly and also directly. Mm -hmm. But personally, I've not thought of any day that I should commit. I should uh, commit suicide. But I had this friend. Uh, who lost her both parents when we were in high school. Mm -hmm. And she was the only girl, in, she was the only one in that family, and she was rejected by by everyone. They could not even pay, even the uncles and the aunties could not pay her school fees. And at this point, she felt like she did not have any purpose in life. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was able to talk to people, to teachers, and uh, she did not commit it. Mm -hmm. So like, I think you should always talk to someone when you, are, you feel like Yes, okay. Uh, so, Shalit, before we get to the point where we get to address what these people would have done, uh, because you, you can hear that every person's experience is different, but it all, it all ends up to 
the thought of wanting to commit suicide. How would you say we are doing as a country, as far as mental health is concerned? Are people even able to assess mental health as a service only? Um, as a country right now, there are mental health practitioners out there. Mm -hmm. But there is so much stigmatization around mental health. And some of it is driven by our cultural beliefs. Okay. Where when someone begins to manifest something like schizophrenia, they'd say, oh no, this one has been bewitched. This is something that's still going on. Um, when we come to depression and someone openly comes out and says, you know, I'm feeling very sad, I don't want to get out of bed, you'd find the type of response you're received with is all of us feel sad. You know, all of us feel tired. All of us don't want to do it, but we have to get up. So, just quote and quote in Swahili, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Stop pretending, get up, move. So you'd find when it comes to mental health, a lot of the issues surrounding mental health, people would just say, we've overcome, we've overcome, we've overcome. But we haven't truly overcome. It still bothers us. Um, extreme levels of stress, um, feeling like people just don't understand you anytime you want to express yourself, how it comes out, the response that you get, none, none of it seems to be working. And when you actually openly express that, I'd like to talk to someone, mm -hmm. even to your friends, they'd be like, oh my God, you're seeing a therapist. You see, they think something so, there's like a very big problem that you have that mm -hmm. you actually don't have. You could be just experiencing really high levels of stress. But because it's not dealt with appropriately at that time, then it starts to continue into depression. Mm -hmm. Because you have to understand that before you get suicidal, you started from somewhere. You started from somewhere. And if you did not get the help you received at that particular time, then it's just a continuation. Okay. Bad gets to worse, gets to worse, until you lead up to depression, hence then suicide. Okay. So I want to bring you in, Maureen, on this. You're a mental health blogger. and. I've actually visited your blogs and I've seen some of the posts that you share. Do you say that you've been able to send a message or to spread a message on mental health? And how would you say so far, based on the articles that you put up on your blog, you've been able to impact and create a change on mental health? Yeah, for that, I would say I am so sure that I have been able to reach someone somewhere who is so depressed, someone, someone who thinks that they're the only ones going through that phase. Uh, this I did because I discovered depression is as a result of piled up stress and stress it's you just decide to pile up emotions within you and uh, you don't have someone to give you the space to air them out and so in the blog I give people an opportunity to tell your story speak up because I don't want that uh, those emotions to keep piling up within you, within you, within you. So I've opened up a platform for someone who thinks you have so much um, inside you, you feel like you want to explode. Mm -hmm. So to avoid that, I give people the platform to speak up and I believe by speaking up, at least the load is a bit lighter even from their side. Okay, yeah. uh, so uh, between Caro and Belinda, who are students who are at Kenyatta University, we know that the young people, especially campus students, are people who have found themselves um, going through depression. Sometimes they don't even understand what it is that they're going through. What would you say, Caro, are the causes of depression among your peers? Okay, first of all, lack of self-esteem. Most of the campus students, lacks, you lack self-esteem. You have to trust in yourself, you have to believe in yourself for you to make it in life. There's a quote that says, in, uh, even, if, even if, even the darkest nights, even, the, even for the darkest night, the light will always shine. Mm -hmm. So they should not give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say lack of self-esteem, stress, which most of us have experienced, mm -hmm. stress, mm, what else? Yeah, stress, lack of self-esteem. Okay. Belinda, what do you think are the causes of um, uh, mental health in your peers? Okay, you know, in universities, we are different people. We come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so when you come and meet there, you meet that you're just different in a way. And we, we, some come from very poor backgrounds. They don't have school fees. So you, you can find a student, a student wants to, to commit suicide just because they have not paid school fees that many, that uh, semester. And others, relationship issues, you have had those relationship issues in uh, universities whereby when someone leaves you or you are heartbroken, you want to kill yourself just yeah. because you, know, you don't know you can move on and be with someone else. Okay. So those are the major causes. Okay. So Charlene, having had what 
could be the cause of um, mental health among the young people. That is just a few. We also have drug abuse. We have uh, peer pressure itself where people feel like I'm supposed to be at a certain level. We also have like lack of understanding. People don't really understand when you want to talk to them. So Kara has talked about self-esteem. So how do we how do you address that to young people out there struggling with self-esteem to make sure that they don't hit rock bottom and feel like the only solution for them now is taking away their lives? Um, I think the first thing I'd say is be okay with who you are. Do not look at other people and then try to match up or get to their own level. We all move at our own pace. We all have our own dreams. So when it comes to self-esteem, it can be coupled up with identity formation. You'd find, especially right now, for somebody who is transitioning between high school, coming into university, there's this whole thing about independence. You know, I want to be free, I want to be able to do A, I want to be able to do B, but I also have to get to class and I also have to be respectful to my parents and I need to be able to spend, so how am I going to be able to do that and keep up with peer pressure and all my friends at the same time, so how do I balance all of this? <coughs> and in the process of doing all this, I still have to decide who I want to become because I'm not in school just to waste time. Okay. So I'm here to learn to build my dream, right? So first, be okay with who you are. If you don't like something, it's okay. Just because other people like it and you don't, it's not, you don't necessarily have to like it, you know? If you prefer to go a certain route with everything, then you do that. Because as a human being, you, are, you have a right to be yourself. So don't go around with following peer pressure and saying, I'll have to do this and I'll have to do that. If you don't understand yourself, if you're not okay in your own skin, if you're not comfortable with who you are, then you are majorly susceptible to you know, going with the wind, like a flag. Friend A says, let's do this. All right, let's do it. Friend B says, let's do this, let's do it. And eventually, it will come to bother you because if it's something that you're not comfortable with and you didn't speak up for yourself, then now you start asking yourself, why did I do this? Why did I do this? Remember, what works for friend A will not work for you. What works for friend B may not work for you. So then now it also comes back to rewards. If you're doing this because friend A got A and you did it and you ended up getting D, you know? So then, am I not worth it? I did the exact same thing. Why didn't I get the exact same reward? So you find you're creating stress in the sense that you're not okay with who you are and you're trying to fit into something. And of course, if your friend A was being true to themselves and they got A and they were happy about it, then they were true to themselves. You tried something that was not for you, didn't get the same um, return, and then what happens? Stress. Mm -hmm. Questions about, am I not worthy? Am I not good enough? Am I not okay? Why did, why did it work for A? Why did it not work for B? You know, things like that. So be okay with you. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to say, my route is road D. You take A, as long as we both get to the finish line and I'm happy with where I am, that's okay. So that it's also easier for you to be able to pick what works for you and what doesn't. Okay, so bring you uh, Carol. What, how do you deal with pressure, whether it's positive pressure or negative pressure? How do you get to balance? How do you make sure that you don't get to a space whereby you know, falling into depression or you cannot control everything that is thrown at you, whether positive or negative? First of all, first of all, what people don't understand, when you are in stress, you have to do what you like most. If it's music, listen to music. If it's dancing, go dance. If it's Staying with friends, go stay with friends. So personally, when I'm stressed, I prefer listening to music mm -hmm. and sleeping. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sleeping, listening to music, and visiting friends. Okay. Uh, when I'm depressed, personally, I have to talk to someone. Yeah, I spend most of my time speaking to my friends, calling them, telling them this has happened and this is the cause, how can I deal with it? And how has it been calling someone and telling them that you feel depressed? Do they understand you or do, do you feel like you have to go to them with this long list of things that you have to explain, emotions that probably you don't understand yourselves? As, how has the experience been really breaking down all that to you, to people that you talk to? Okay, first of all, people are different. People are so different. Some of them, you'll approach them, you'll call them. Uh, let me quote it in Kiswahili. 
utaambia niko na shida mahali mm-hmm. then they'll start telling you like shida like in this world who came to a stress mm-hmm. but trust me everyone has his or her own problems mm-hmm. so like people are different yeah some of them you approach them they'll help you deal with your situation mm-hmm. others you just approach them and nothing will happen okay. but i just want to encourage people if you have if you have stress please make sure talk to someone yeah talk to someone okay yeah uh, maureen um in one of your blogs i saw the hashtag speak up so are people really comfortable as a society creating an, at- at an atmosphere or a space whereby people going through depression or people going through mental health are free to speak up without being judged do you feel that has been achieved uh, from the society's angle mm-hmm. i don't think that has been achieved yet mm-hmm. and i'm really fighting hard to make sure uh, people who are depressed people who are stressed mm-hmm. have been given that space to mm-hmm. speak up they feel so comfortable speaking up without being judged mm-hmm. yes okay so uh okay according to the world health organization uh, the director said that countries should inco- yeah, should incorporate uh, proven suicide prevention strategies so to you as a psychologist as a counseling psychologist what do you think what methods do you think what strategies do you think our country kenya can put up to make sure that we prevent we don't only get to speak about suicide when someone jumps from a 20 uh, 24 story building that we are ready that we don't get to hear someone has taken this type of drug, we don't get to hear someone has hanged themselves. Okay, so first, it's the stigmatization. Mental health, anybody, anybody, anybody is susceptible to mental health. If you have high stress levels, then you're stressed. There, there's, there are different types of stress, you know. If you're experiencing chronic stress, you may slip into depression. So start talking about mental health. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you are overly stressed. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm having trouble or difficulty with this, or my thoughts are all over the place. Come and seek out mental health practitioners. You do not have to be schizophrenic, uh, for the layman's term, a madman, to go and seek out a therapist or a counselor or anybody, okay? Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Step two is talk about it. So many of our people, so many of the youth, so many of the guys in the job market are committing suicide. In, in high school, in primary school, in university, when you start working, parents, grandparents, there are some people, every age group has suicide cases. Why? Why do we have suicide cases in every age group? Start talking about it. Because when people are stressed, we are a nation. Human beings are supposed to behave or act as in unity, as one. <laughs> So when we shun you because you have a hard time adjusting to the world, then what are we doing? Talk about it. The next thing is be aware of the causes of suicide. Mm -hmm. Listen to how people are speaking. Learn what the telltale signs are, you know? Understand what type of words people would use. Am I, I feel like I'm a burden. I feel like I'm useless and I'm hopeless. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to move, you know? Why questioning why they're, why they're existing in any form whatsoever? Why should I be alive? Those are telltale signs. Listen to, if somebody is suicidal, they'll tell you how they've planned to kill themselves. Listen, because it's not a joke. Okay. They're not joking. Mm-hmm. When it comes to maybe step three or four, is in institutions, talk about this suicide. Understand what a suicide contagion is. Because uh, like Carol had said, somebody in high school committed suicide. And when she was thinking about it, maybe it wasn't so bad. Because understand what happens to peers when their friends commit suicide. Understand the consequences. Understand group mentality. Because these are serious issues that nobody wants to talk about. And our people are killing themselves every single day Mm -hmm. over things that could have been discussed over help that could have been offered and given, but when they come to us, we tell them what? You're just stressed out. All of us are stressed out. Okay. Pick yourself up. Mm -hmm. Before we get to to really talk about when now does it stop being stress, when we stop calling it stress, to now this person is depressed, I want to bring in Karen say that someone in high school committed suicide. 
what did the school do after that was there counseling for other students or did it just happen and life went on as usual okay that time you know we were young mm -hmm. yeah it was like five years ago mm -hmm. yeah back in 2014 mm -hmm. A friend of mine, she was in Form 2, mm -hmm. uh, it was a family-related issue mm -hmm. that made her commit this suicide. Mm -hmm. So after committing the suicide, whatever happened, uh, the other students who were called for a meeting were told that we should understand mm -hmm. that everyone mm -hmm. is passing through mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So you should be courageous, mm -hmm. love yourself, mm -hmm. actually that's what you were told, mm -hmm. love yourself, and try as much as possible mm -hmm. to avoid such an occasion again oh, okay so whatever happened we were just talked to and uh, we took heart okay yeah and life moved on i asked that because yeah. you see most of the times um for when someone commits you say that person is gone mm -hmm. but the pain the grief is left with those who are left behind so now at what point now does stress stop being stressed when you just like you get from the office and they're like, hey, today's job was too much. And I feel too much stress. At what point now, what do we look out for to know that this person is not stressed anymore, but this person is actually falling into depression? Okay, so for that, there's, it's so broad, but I'll just, I'll try to break it down uh, best I can. <laughs> so first, it starts with understanding stress. There's a the type of stress that motivates you, that makes you want to do better, makes you want to pass and, you know, achieve something in life. There's a type of stress that we call acute stress. This is stress that will come bother you for about an hour, then disappear. Chronic stress, this is everyday stress. Every single day you find you, you have very high stress levels, everything is bothering you, um, you know, constant troubles, left, right and center. When you start slipping into depression after the chronic stress, you'd find things that you are interested in, things that you like to do, you're no longer interested. Okay. People that you would reach out to and you know, just jokingly tell them, by the way, I'm stressed out. You don't want to talk to them as well. You start isolating yourself. Um, you start, you know, googling or getting more information about death, different types of death, talking about death. You know, questioning your existence on the planet. You start as you start uh, feeling very hopeless, like you're beyond any help. Mm -hmm. Nobody can help you. You start questioning, you know, um, if you are actually worthy of receiving any help at, w at whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So by that time, you find you've already started sleeping into depression, okay? You're constantly crying, you're constantly unhappy, you can't even remember the last time you smiled or even had any fun whatsoever. So that time you're in depression. When you're coming into suicide, like now you've got a no help from, from the initial stressors to acute to chronic straight into depression when you start slipping into a suicide mentality now you start actively thinking about how you are going to be able to take your own life mm -hmm. so we have the stage one which is thinking about it talking about it you know researching about it then these affirmations it's okay whether i'm here or not it won't make any difference I don't need to be present. People don't require me on this planet. I'm not important enough. So now you convince yourself that you know what? I really don't need to be here. Mm -hmm. Then now, it is the method. How would I like to do it? Would I like to strangle myself? Would I like to take pills? Should it be painful? Should it be painless? Am I supposed to write a note? Am I supposed to say goodbye? And they'll always talk about this, even if they're not directly telling you that I'm about to kill myself. When you listen to them speak, these are things that you look out for. Okay. Because that is leading straight into suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Maureen, let's now talk about some of the, let's talk about stigmatization. Some of the needs that you've had around mental health. Maybe, for example, in your blog and your interactions with people, what are some of the myths that you, you've had people tell you on mental health? Yeah, some, some, of the, some of the myths. Some of the myths? Yeah. Okay, first, uh, there's, there's been this myth of you go to someone, you'll speak to them, and they will never help you. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this would like to tell someone out there who wishes to speak to someone. Mm -hmm. We have we actually have people who are genuine. Mm -hmm. They will genuinely listen to your problem. Uh, you can visit a psychologist who will genuinely listen to you and give you help mm -hmm. without any fear of stigmatization, mm -hmm. without having any fear of whatever you're passing through being spread out there. Mm -hmm. So that's a myth. That we actually have genuine people out there who are very much willing to help you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so for you, Belinda, what now do you think? For you, if you find yourself with a person, probably you've been able to identify that this person is not doing okay. Yeah. How can you tell someone out there, a person who is watching us today, on how to relate with someone they feel might be depressed or maybe going through a tough time and is even thinking of committing suicide? Uh, if you find someone who is uh, being depressed, I think it's good you just listen to them. Even if you cannot help them, listen. Even if you won't give them answers, just listen to them. And uh, uh, t tell this person to talk to someone. If you cannot talk to your friend, you have a family. You can talk to your mother. This is someone who is very close to you. You can talk to your, to your sisters, to your brothers. That is if you cannot talk, talk to your friends. Yeah, that is what I could tell someone. And if you find someone is, is depressed, just try to be with them. Be in their shoes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, yesterday was the um, World uh, Suicide Prevention Day. And the World Health Organization, in cooperation with other institutions, was able to bring up a campaign that is called uh, the 40 Seconds of Action, uh, whereby uh, just encouraging people to take 40 seconds of action to reduce stigma associated with, with mental health. What do we think, Kara, we should do? Because people are so much hooked into their phones. You text someone and they'll be like, I'm okay. But if you really interact with this person at a personal level, this person could be going through the worst uh, situation in life. So what do we think as Kenyans, as individuals, we can do to make sure that we are also playing part in making sure that we're living in a mental health free country? Okay. People should be proactive. Mm -hmm. You should be proactive. When, uh, when you tell me, um, when I call you, I tell Patricia, I have this issue, I can't solve it, I'm giving up, you have to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me, call me. Mm -hmm. Call me, mm -hmm. come visit me, mm -hmm. come talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to take action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to be proactive, take action. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for the... When I call you, I tell you, Patricia, I have an issue. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until I commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Come, talk to me, mm -hmm. call me, mm -hmm. visit me. I'll tell you more. Yeah, and okay. it will help. So you have to be proactive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, based on that, Charlene, now as a, from an expert's point of view, based on what the World Health Organization is trying to do, 40 seconds of action, what now do we do as a society as we wind up our conversation for the night? It starts with you. <laughs> Remember, before anybody reaches out, mm -hmm. they are reaching out for a response. Mm -hmm. So the response you give as a society, whoever you are, start with yourself. Because you can give a response that can push someone overboard mm -hmm. or make them feel like they cannot get any help at all. Mm -hmm. And that one time that they tried, or the second or the third time that they tried and they kept getting a response that they were not anticipating, then now they start to believe that they are truly helpless. Okay. Everybody they've tried to speak to has not had a solution for them or has, you know, in one way or another, not given them an appropriate response. So start with you. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you're the type of person who has a negative mindset, then you'd probably be seeing the world in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. So if someone who is severely depressed is coming to talk to you and all you're giving out is negativity, then guess what? You're just adding you're actually helping them to come to that decision. Okay. So take responsibility because the people who are reaching out, they are reaching out because we're a community. We live together in unison. So start with you. Make sure, personally, I'm okay, all right? If I'm not happy, find out why. Why am I not happy? What can I do to make sure that I'm okay? Mm -hmm. What can I do to make sure that I'm genuinely smiling and not faking a smile all the time? Mm -hmm. So that when somebody comes to me with their problem, I'm not really taking it as my own. I'm here to be empathetic and not sympathetic. Okay. Remember, if you're sympathetic, you'll cry with them and there's no solution. Mm -hmm. If you're empathetic, then you know to help. You'll be objective, but you're not carrying their problem with you. So it's not bringing you down as well. So when you start with you, 
and there's so many of us out here, mental health pr practitioners. Like I said, you don't have to, you know, have a very severe problem. Okay. If you just feel like you're not okay, talk to someone. Uh -huh. Fix you first so that when someone reaches out to you, you are prepared. You have the strength. You know, you know what to say. You know how to be positive. And you're not just putting all your negative burdens on them as well and saying, ah, even me, I went through this, you know. Even me, this is happening. Even me, okay. this is happening. Okay. Okay. So... Thank you very much, uh, ladies, for really finding the time to come and talk about this issue tonight. It was really, I'm very grateful for you joining us tonight, and I hope that every person who's watching us from home has been able to take one or two. So let us speak out. Let us get out of our phones for a minute. This, the 40 seconds of action campaign by the World Health Organization can do a lot in our country. So that is all we have for you tonight on Y254 News Updates. My name is Patricia Moriuki. Do have yourselves a very good night.